Please be advised that Little Miss Recap contains adult language. And Cody says, I'm still in self-deception. I can tell. Oh, John Dutton, was that you? John Dutton. (laughs) Hi, everyone. Welcome to Little Miss Recap, the podcast where we throw stones in glass houses. The the mixed metaphors on this man... (laughs) Are stunning. Can, are or worse than his hair in many and, instances. And what's nuts is he said it twice in that conversation. I don't know what what does he mean. Like I know what the saying means. What I think he means is we both. Maybe I don't know what the hell he means. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to parse it together. I, think I know what he means is we both said the things we shouldn't say. I think that's what he meant. Yeah. Yeah. But it didn't come out right. Yeah. He says something later that's a real, like, he doesn't get it right. No, he never gets things right. And it was real bad. And I was like, holy shit. Oh, here he says, um, he talks about the bridge being on fire. Oh, yes. Why does the bridge have to be on fire? Couldn't it just collapse? Like, do we need it to also be on fire? That's well, a little apparently for that. him. <laughs> well, he is the king of overkill, so this makes sense. <laughs> My name's Amy Archer. I am your host. I'm here with my lovely sidekick, my lovely co-host, my lovely wind beneath my wings, Amanda lipnack Radell, and her shoulder cat. Hi. And shoulder cat is here today. He's good morning, everybody. Hello, afternoon, evening, whenever you're all listening to this. We will have a kitty guest today. He's real upset because I'm going out of town this weekend. And so he has seen the evil suitcase. This is how much we love you guys. We're recording this at the crack of dawn before Amanda leaves. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So that we can get this to you. To the people. The people At 11.01 p.m. on (laughs) Sunday. (laughs) Not that that anyone stays up and listens, but you never know. You might have that person. But when y'all wake up on Monday on Labor Day, there it will be. It's there. It's there. Just waiting Um, for us. Just another reminder, the full episode will be on, help me. Patreon, Patreon Super and Supercast. And yes. the links to that are in the show notes. You're going to get like a 15 to 20 minute sampler on the free feed, but the good meat will be behind our paywall. And we've discovered why, because we get real deep into these conversations. We do. And we get real triggered by these people. And, <laughs> real lives, and, and we want to make sure who's listening and who's not. Yeah. We're spilling a lot of, a lot of our own lives into yes. this. I feel like I was born to do this. I was oh born God. to cover Sister Wives. Hand to God, when we met that first time, I was like, I want to cover Sister Wives with her so badly. How do I ingratiate myself into this woman's life <laughs> so I can make this happen? And here we are. I didn't even have to work that hard. You came to me and said, do you want to do this? I'm Amy Archer. I will now go by this woman. <laughs> this woman. This woman. <laughs> This woman. So this episode, I was texting you while I was watching it because it was wild. Guys, they are not holding back this no. episode. Puddle Monkey is not playing this season. We are not waiting till the ninth hour, the hundredth hour to see this stuff. They are showing it all. And yes, Amy was texting me through this and I was in the middle of a contentious work meeting. And I was like, <laughs> the million ways in which I would rather hang up this and watch sister mm-hmm. wives right mm-hmm. now are many numerous i feel like a few key things happened this episode that were super important one is we met cody's incel group that was holy interesting holy cannoli yes we met his manosphere oh good and um second i feel like oh god the shame bell will be put to good use this episode because i feel like he took a little bit of responsibility he took a smidge a smidge a smidge. A smidge. Now, more in his world, has, more than he has. The fact that he's taken any is significant. Yes. He still, yes. however, seems to think that Janelle bears the bulk of all yes. shame and blame, and we yes. completely disagree. And then, out of left field, we have Murray dumping all the tea. Right? Oh, my God. I was like, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's... Yes. She, I think Mary's really realizing that she will never again be with Cody. This this incident, I don't know why, but this incident with Janelle seems to have sparked something in her. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. what it is, but I think she's starting to put all of this together. Right. That Finally. There's, and the fact that every time he talks about 
you know, with his incel group talking about it's impacting my marriage with Robin and it's impacting my marriage with Janelle. Never says a word. Never, never. mentions Mary in the whole conversation. No, no. She's not. They're not married. She's not even an afterthought. She's not even an afterthought. She's no, not a thought. Correct. She's not a thought. No. All right. So we're going to cover Sister Wives Season 18, Episode 3. Even though I have this recording session labeled Episode 4, I'm like... Eh, whatever. Throwing stones in glass houses. All right, guys. So I did the notes for this. Um, all except I did not. I, I had promised you guys that we were going to do verbatim the fight. The fight ended up being like 15 minutes long. Yeah, we had no idea that it would be that long. And I'm glad it was because so much shit came out. I'm but glad it we're not going to read to you line for line that fight. <laughs> no, no. So we're just going to talk about it generally, like some of the points that they made. Yeah. Um, all right, so we open in Oklahoma with Michael, Cody's bro. Right. Real brother. Real brother. They Nathan, look nothing alike. Nothing. Nathan, nothing. his friend, and they're on a man trip to Brian's right. house. To Brian Colwell and his yes. sweetheart Judith. Yes. Oh, God. So Cody reminds us that he was not raised polygamous, that his parents took it up once he was an adult, mm-hmm. that he has five sisters and he is one of five brothers. Yep. Now, Nathan is a dear Fundy friend, and he's been married and divorced in polygamy. So, now, this guy, Nathan, looks like he's 23. He looks like he's 12. I don't understand, A, how he's old enough to have had multiple wives and a mar- and a divorce, and how he's Cody's friend, except for the fact I have a very good friend who is a year older than my mother. So, like, it happens. It Inter- happens. Intergenerational friendships absolutely happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but this guy does not fit. No. 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 Uh, Michael's in his 30s, and that's pretty much all we know about him. I, I um, have to wonder if they have different mothers. I think they do. Because, so Cody's mo- Cody's dad married, obviously, Cody's mom, and then Janelle's mom, Cheryl. And then there's another wife, but she never wanted to be televised. Right. So I wonder if that's Michael's mother. Just Maybe, they because they look nothing alike. Because Cody looked exactly like Curtis. So we know... And we yeah. know that we know that the Cody Brown genes run real strong. If you look at his children, there's oh, zero man. doubt who fathered his Jesus. children. It's yeah. it's wild. Mm-hmm. It's wild. All right. So um, Brian is mainstream, and we know that he was the consummate bachelor until last year. When let's ne- hashtag never forget Cody dancing at that wedding <laughs> for sure. Can we also <laughs> just note that saying someone is the consummate bachelor is was fifties code for being gay. Yeah. Can we yeah, just yeah, say yeah. that out loud? Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So okay. Cody, you know, this is his man group. This is his therapy. If this is this guy's therapy, so much makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian says to Cody, Cody's all curled up on the couch, like in the fetal position. <laughs> Brian's mm-hmm. going, dude, this is probably just like the stages of grief. And Cody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was in disbelief. And he's on the couch and he's saying, I'm still in the anger stage. Now, there are two different Cody's here. You have Cody on the couch in his man group who's a little softer. And and I just wrote, he seems to not have a hard time being vulnerable with other men. No, he doesn't. And he seemed to be being... He was definitely more real with those guys than he is on the couch. Yes. It seemed to be. Yeah. And when we come back to the couch, he's all like aggro again. Yeah. Maybe he's really pissed off at Puddle Monkey. <laughs> Tim Gibbons is his enemy. <laughs> he can't hide it. He's he can't. Like... <laughs> so Cody tells us, here's he, he on the couch he says he was in the anger stage, and he says, here's what happened. I was online, and I was looking for, like, ways to manage a divorce, but to keep your relationship with your kids healthy or something like that. Okay, Cody, that's not what you were Googling. Amanda, not... what was he Googling? He was Googling how to deal with your bitchy (laughs) ex-wife. He was Googling what to do when a slut walks away from you. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Here's the thing. You and I might, you and I might actually engage in such a Google search. How do we, how do we manage co-parenting with your ex? All of this. And we're going to wind up on therapists' websites. We're going to wind up finding books. This guy wound up on 4chan. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so did. that explains a lot. I actually have that written. He basically ended up on 4chan or an incel community or both. Or both. And uh, where anger against women was propagated. 
And he says. Supported. Yeah. He says, I think it was a touch of poison because I've been taking this anger out on everybody. He tells the manosphere this. And I actually think that was really insightful. That was, that was insightful. Like, I. Let me ask you this. Oh, I had a question. Now I forget what it is. Uh, never mind. We'll just keep going. Okay. okay. So he says, Robin actually told me I'm, this is affecting our marriage. Oh, I know what my question was. Yeah. Could this be what I've predicted? The beginning of Cody's redemption arc. Uh, it would take a lot. I know. It would take a lot. And given, okay, if we're going to call this Cody's redemption arc. <laughs> Are we? <laughs> if we're going to. Okay. Big if. Might need the shame bell here. If shame. we're going to call it that. Shame. I think we might have gone Shame. up a little bit up the uh, roller coaster that poor Robin talked about, which we'll talk about her freak out in a second. <laughs> and then the conversation with Janelle just killed it. Yes. So, no. Well, here's what I think, though. I don't know when this is, like, I don't know when the fight with Janelle was filmed. It's true. Versus the Manosphere. So Gwen, I think it was Gwendolyn said in one of her videos that he has started to change and has come back. Okay. Like he was real angry, but he's working on that now and he's starting to come back. So I wonder if we're seeing the beginning of that. Maybe. It, and I, I, it sounds like, and they didn't say it specifically because they never really indicate time specifically other than like births. I feel like mm -hmm. births are the best way we have to gauge when yes. things actually Unless happen. Unless it's a little on, house on the prairie and then we right, yeah, we don't. for six years. Right. <laughs> but I think this Oklahoma trip happened before the Janelle fight because Janelle said, you know, he'd been away for a while. So, but true. who knows? I don't think he ever true. goes over to Janelle and Janelle's anyway. That's true. So we're four, 15 minutes in. We, we're through paragraph one. <laughs> Look at us. Okay. Cooking with gas so, over here. <laughs> Cody on, or Robin on the couch says, Cody is all over the place. It's sadness. It's anger. It's rage. It's like I'm on the Cody coaster. Oh! Oh, I'm like, it's oh. so scary. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening in your house, crazy lady? So now Nathan says, and Nathan is wrong. Before I say this, Nathan is wrong. Okay. He says, you know, anger is only rooted in two things. Fear oh, yeah. or self-deception or delusion. I wrote, what about pain, guys? What about pain? Anger is very often rooted in pain. Anger, and in this case, is that's what this op is. Yeah, anger is empowering. Pain is vulnerable. I think we've said this before. Yes, yes. And I, I, he's not wrong. That anger could be fear. That's absolutely true too. But it's not. It's not the other thing he said. Whatever the no, hell that self -deception. was. Self deception. Self deception. So no. He says you have to look in the mirror. You have to own the good, the bad, and the ugly, and you have to own up to it. And Cody says, "I'm still in self deception. I can tell." Oh, John Dutton, was that you? John Dutton. <laughs> John Guys, Dutton and Boss Hog, here we are. How did you come? How did I you wind out, up this podcast? I put, out, I put out a Yellowstone episode yesterday and titled it Yellow Jackets. So I we had a lot that. of fun thinking about what our Yellow Jackets would be doing out on that Dutton Ranch. I love it. <laughs> so Cody now on the couch says, I was ambivalent because I thought she was playing a game, Christine. Yeah. And he says, to me, and this tells us everything, we already know this, but he admits it, he says it out loud. To me, this breakup is a mark of shame. Yeah, he's embarrassed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's embarrassed that somebody left him. And I do think he probably really did think, oh, she's just playing chicken. Yeah, yeah. Hey, everyone, stay tuned. Little Miss Recap will be right back after these words. And this is why, like, we'll get to it, but I don't believe Janelle's theory that he's trying to get Janelle to leave. I just think he wants Janelle to fall in line. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, think he he's wants trying to, to leave. No, no, mm -hmm. but he, he wants her to be very different than who she is. Yes. So Brian says a lot of people got divorced during COVID and I thought, oh, here we go. But he yeah. said, no, everybody was too, together too much. And that's true. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would kill to be a sociologist and a psychologist who looks back on COVID and the aftermath, like 20 years from now. Yeah. It could be an amazing, yeah. Yeah, amazing I study. So now we all talk about Cody's guy time and Robin says he needs it. And, you know, just like I have all my girl time. What girl time do any of these wives get? Um, okay. What girl time does Robin get? Hanging out with Aurora and Brianna? 
Yeah, that's is that what, her girl time? That's what husbands think wives' girl time is, hanging out with our children. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like, no. No, 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 no. It's getting away from your children. Mm -hmm. So Janelle says, oh, yeah, Cody's been doing this for years. When we lived in, I forget if she says Lehigh or Vegas, she says it used to be testosterone Tuesday. Ew. Okay, guys. Cody says, look, polygamy is nice. And I think he says this to the guys. Polygamy is nice because if you get sick of one another, you can bounce around. If the wife gets sick of you, she wants you to have another wife that you could bounce around to. Now, they show this footage to Janelle. And Janelle goes, bingo. That's exactly right. Yep. They show this to Murray, and she is flipping out. Yes. I don't know why. Maybe this hit a little too close to home, <laughs> but she's like, that makes me sick. Maybe you should look. Now, if you notice, Mary's the only one who can say picture. Okay? Mm -hmm. Actually, so she, Christine says picture, too. Oh, okay. There's a in it. <laughs> so she says, maybe you should look at the big picture, but then she says, and figure, figure mm. out. Mm -hmm. So we almost there, Mary. Almost yeah. There. Oh, but she's still a real dill. Yeah, everything's so, a dill. <laughs> she said, "Maybe you should figure out what's happening instead of using someone as an escape." Yeah, which is now, true. Now Brian says, "How would you feel if Christine gets into another relationship, David Woolley?" Right. And uh, Cody says, "It might bother me. Like I might be jealous." But on the couch, he's like angry. Cody goes, "I don't care. I, I right. wouldn't care." I and. It's interesting that he said that he's like, I might be jealous, and yet he cannot forgive her for her jealousy when they were married. Yes. Now, man, I'm gonna need a little drum roll here. Can you can you provide? Cody's gonna show an actual emotion. Are you ready? He's gonna show an actual insight. Okay, talk to okay. me. Brian asked Cody, if you could change anything, what would it be? And Cody says there was a period years ago where Christine was beginning to struggle with polygamy. And I was just flabbergasted and I was yelling at her and feeling insulted by it. And I was saying like, but then you wouldn't have me and you wouldn't have the kids mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have blah, blah, blah. He said, now that I look back on it, I should have, he didn't say empathized. I'm putting that in there. Yeah. But and that's what I he meant. I should have said, I know it's hard, baby. I love you. I know polygamy can be hard and we'll get through this. <laughs> My head exploded. <laughs> if he had treated her with that modicum of care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they would not be here correct correct and she i was not asking for anything ridiculous she was asking for support it's so interesting because when we see him in the beginning of this episode he is on a high he is all cheery mm -hmm. he's all, and when i get glimpses of that i'm even like that's the old cody <laughs> Yeah, that's like, the fun is, one that we met. This is how long I've been in a relationship with this man. <laughs> <laughs> There's my old Cody. I missed him so. There's the Cody that made me believe that he was a good father. <laughs> right. Not the Cody you knew and loved because we're not going that far. But Jesus. the old Cody you remember. Yes. yes. So now they must, they must show Christine this footage. Yeah. And she says, or they say to her, was it that you hated polygamy? She says, no, it wasn't that I hated polygamy. It was that I gave him everything. And she keeps doing this like, I would do anything he asked. What is he asking for? I know. <laughs> like, are we is, talking weird sex stuff? Is there some piss play? Like, I'm not judging, <laughs> but is there? No. I don't know. What, what's I mean, happening? I have to think in, and I, you know, I'm a Christine fan. She's my she's my girl. Mm -hmm. I have to think her her view of sex and sexuality is relatively naive that'd be my oh, guess sure. yes so i mean he might be asking for something as crazy as her getting on top and and she's like what? <laughs> I'll do anything for you. <laughs> who the hell knows meanwhile murray's over there with like the sex swing in the dungeon I yeah she's yep. yeah she's had to have been worth something i don't know yeah, i don't know hey guys it's amy when amanda and i were doing this episode we forgot to include the comment of the week because we are a professional, well-run podcast. So I'm here to interrupt our flow to tell you that for last week's watch along thread, which is in our Backdoor Friends Facebook group, link is in the show notes, we are awarding comment of the week to Rachel, because Rachel said, regarding trying to make a text into a video chat and then getting pissy when they don't want to. Tell me you don't have independent young adult children without telling me you don't have independent young adult children. Thank you, Rachel. 
Well done. I mean, Robin, you do realize that Christine and Janelle's grown children, some of them are parents. Some of them live in different time zones. I mean, granted, I couldn't keep track of time zones, but maybe people do. And how you're going to coordinate all of these people on a video call, and for what? To say what? To complain that your kids aren't in the grab bag or don't want to be in the grab bag? My advice to Robin is this. Let Daddy Logan handle everything. Okay, if Logan's in charge of shit, it will get done and it will get done the correct way. All right, so guys, don't forget, every Sunday night we have a live thread, a live watch along thread in our Little Miss Recaps Backdoor Friends private Facebook group where you can make comments, and in our next episode, you will hear if your comment won comment of the week. So thanks again, Rachel. Now back to the show. So she says, I just gave so much to him, and when I needed him, he did not help me with the kids. And then she says the quiet part out loud. She says, he has done so much for Robin's kid and has been such a good father to them right yeah. from the very beginning. Now, this is something you and I talked about. So Cody explains it. He says, when we lived in Lehigh, I worked 60 hours a week and we get some sure, footage. Jan. Well, if he was a, an advertising salesperson, I believe that. If he was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that was also before the show. Yeah, that was definitely mm -hmm. before the show. That so was when he sold the Fiesta Cantina sign. So we get some footage <laughs> on somebody on a pogo stick. Was it Gwendolyn? I think it was Gwendolyn. Okay. I thought so. At first I was like, oh my God, it's Trudy. And I'm like, yeah. no, or truly. And I'm like, no, she can't be. I, I call her Trudy too, Cody. Yeah. So um, he says, Christine was asking for things that plural marriage just didn't afford anyone then. So you and I talked about this. Robin's kids come into a very different financial picture, yep. a very different situation. Cody's not working anymore. He's home. Yep. You know what I mean? And that builds resentment. It and sure I'm not, does. I'm not saying that, like, it's nobody's to blame in that situation. I feel, well, Cody's to blame. Cody's to blame because he didn't support everybody in the way they needed. Right. Exactly. But, like, sometimes it just works out yeah. that you have people in the same family experiencing a very different childhood. Absolutely. For whatever reason. Absolutely. Okay. So Robin says, Cody's an amazing father. Are you ready for this one? But he's gone three fourths of the time, three quarters of the time. No, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. Mm -mm. Where he is certainly he? Has, he certainly hasn't been since he was in Flagstaff. A hundred percent has not been gone three quarters of the time since Flagstaff. I will believe, excusing Mary, I will believe in Vegas, he did actually rotate spending the night with each of his wives. Yeah, but you heard what Christine said. He would come over at night. Yep. Leave first thing in the morning. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wasn't there. No, 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 no. But I do believe he probably spent the night yeah. in yep. each home. And then she's like, that's why I had to bring child care in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, here we are. Um, single mothers everywhere want to throw everything they have in their rooms at the wall because right. you don't need a nanny just because you're a single parent three quarters of the time. Right. Which and, isn't even true. Which isn't even true. But I thought the beauty of polygamy was we have multiple mothers mm -hmm. to help raise our children. And she wouldn't let Christine near her kids. She wouldn't let Christine near her kids. Nope. And if what she really said was, I couldn't ask Cody for help, which I'm like, he, well, he didn't make three of her children, but like he signed on for this. I, I, you, you were just as much a parent as I am. You don't get to like peace yep. out just because you're yep. with a different wife. You are just as much a parent as I am. You made these people. It is your responsibility just as much as mine. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sorry if you have to be asked for a lot. You chose to take on a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You have 18 kids, dude. I don't know right. what to tell you. Right. Yeah, because she's like, I can't ask Cody to parent his own children. Like, forget it. So Brian asks now, if Christine wanted to sit down and talk about this with you, would you? And he says, yes, I would have to put my anger down and talk with her and tell her, look, I know I've done some things wrong and I'm letting you go and I'm setting you free. Brian says, have you learned anything for your other marriages? And Cody says, yes. 
He says, anger is a sword that stabs indiscriminately. And my sword was stabbing everyone. <laughs> I, ha- I hate to agree with Cody, but he's I know. right. I know. Like, right. Where is this version of Cody in the rest of the world? I don't know. So, and while he's saying that, Nathan's going, yeah, brother. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. And he says, my kids were upset. My wives were upset. It's affected all of my relationships. On the couch, he says, my anger has affected my relationship with Robin and Janelle. He says no, Mary. He's, been, he's been very angry with Janelle and he doesn't think it's anything they can't work out, but he knows he has to get beyond this anger. Mm-hmm. Now we have the fight. And the weirdest thing about the fight to me was that Cody walks in and grabs a nice glass of hot water. <laughs> what? I, and I get the point and we've all been there. It's like you come in from outside. You're like, oh my God, I want to, I want hot, hot chocolate or a cup of tea or something. Cause I just want to warm myself. Mm-hmm. But like. I don't know. There was something he does really weird understand about that. that your body temperature is still warm inside. You don't need to warm up your internal body. You don't. You don't. But I, I, I do. Like get... you're just coming from the car, and you're yeah, in it's, Arizona. It's, <laughs> it's not like he'd spent. You know, it's not like he was living in the Canadian Rockies for 19 Thank months, you. and now he has, needs to come in and have Thank you. warm. Those girls could have used a, warm pit, water. a pitcher of hot water. Yes, they could have, and yes, they would have earned could. it. He did not. So he comes in, and I think upon looking back at it, I think what set him off here was the Christmas tree. Yeah. And the mentioning of taking it to the B&B. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for listening to our recap of Sister Wives. If you'd like to hear the full episode where we go on and on and on about Cody Brown and his family, please subscribe to either our Patreon or our Supercast. Links are in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening.